Bad Soup Bonanza. My name is Oliver Pest and this is Zurito Drunkito. Zurito Drunkito, aka the Fresh Princess of Santander. Al oeste en Filadelfia crecía y vivía sin hacer mucho caso a la policía. Jugaba al básquet sin cansarme demasiado porque por las noches me sacaban graduado. Cierto día, jugando al básquet con amigos, los chavales del barrio me metieron en un lío y mi madre me decía una y otra vez: Con tu tía, con tu tía, irás a Santander. The theme for tonight's show is plagiarism. plagiarism. So, what I have done is I have tasked the Costa Fuckers with swapping material with each other you know you can reinterpret into any kind of form that you want you can turn a poem into a dance you can turn a joke into a poem you can turn a song into a story you can do whatever the fuck you want and that is the entire premise of tonight's show and we hope you guys enjoy what they've put together there's a lot of work went in behind the scenes here a lot of hard work um, obviously these guys can't perform in front of crowds anymore, so they're here performing for you for free on Facebook right now and YouTube. Okay, uh, guess what's up next? We have a bit of a punk rock legend for you right now, and his name is Baldy Bertie. <laughs> Enjoy. Hello, I'm Baldy Bertie, lead vocalist of the brand new punk band. Viral overload. Now, because we're all stuck at home in our flats, I thought I'd give you a little snatch of our new single. It's called I Ate Boris Johnson. Now, where's me mic? Oh, I know, I've got it. Here it is. Oh, got it out. Hello, Mike. I ate you, Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, yes, I do. Because though you are in hospital, you bastards, you have pulled through. You had the nerve to clap the nurses on the sex sign number 10. And when it came to raising our wages, you had a laugh with your Brexit men. <laughs> you gave us herd immunity, but you didn't give us no PPE gear. So, oh, what a beautiful irony to see you lying there with the virus in St. Thomas. So, yeah, Boris Johnson, I hate you. Yeah, Boris Johnson, I do. And yes, you are in hospital, but of course you will pull through. Cause cunts like Boris Johnson, cause cunts like Boris Johnson, cause cunts like Boris Johnson, always do! Right, it's nearly time to the clap, I've just got to get all that off. Oh, I'll just fucking keep it on. Woo! Yeah! Yeah, Zurito Donquito enjoyed that one very much. That was very interesting. I quite like that one myself. Guess what I've got next? We have somebody called Bobby. Bobby. Grappler. Here we go. Check it out. Oh, yes. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yes. Oh, oh sorry. Hello there. This is Bobby Grappler here. I'm the wrestler from Mulgai. I'm stuck in Mulgai in lockdown. While I'm here, my good wife Maureen suggested I took up poetry. Because obviously I can't wrestle. And I'm missing rolling about the floor with those muscular men. Not that I'm gay or anything. Anyway, a little chap called Wee Jamble sent me some poetry. So I thought I would actually just read this out to you just now. This is Copy Crush. I'll mind you back in primary two, 
He sat on my left at our wee school desks. You weren't paying attention, you were chatting with your mates about Lassie Things Nail Polish and Gareth Gates. When the teacher gave us out a work wee worksheet, said write down your answer, make it nice and neat. We were only six, we knew about four letters. Some smarmy wee cunt, new mayor, thought that he was better than us, but he wasn't, because it wasn't him she asked. That cool wee lassie had her pick of the class. It was me, wee jambo, she said. Can I copy you? I said, of course you can, hen. But I hadn't thought it through. Sunlike now, I was a thick wee cunt. I'd hide at the back, never sit at the front. Never knew the answer, didn't really care. But say no to that wee lassie, mate, I wouldn't dare. I sat up straight, I got pure bold. Wee Jambo was a ladies' man at six years old. I leaned over to her desk, he said, here, copy me. I looked her in the eye and wrote, ABC. This is not making much sense, but she did pray very kindly send me a bottle of wine. Why don't I try that? Marvellous. I was a dafty, but a pure like you. Had all these weird feelings. Didn't know what to do. Can it be pals with a lassies? So I got some glue and poured it into your can of iron brew. Growing up, I had my idols, like all the wee guys, mostly bog standard, wouldn't come as a surprise. David Beckham Ronaldo were in my top 10, but my number one hero was the big man Eminem. This wine's awful nice. The following extracts are from my childhood diary to sell if I got famous and needed dosh for the priory. Rap verses in tribute to the real slim shady. I wrote them looking as serious as Ian Brady. The way I am are, cause the way I am are, whatever you say I am are, if I wasn't then I would, you yeah, say I was, and the paper on STV every day I am are, Clyde one will not even play my words. The real uh, wee jambo, cause I'm the real wee jambo, I the real wee jambo, all you other wee jambos are just acting like widows. So when the real wee jambo, please stone up, please stone up, please stone up, this is awful good. In secondary school you were still pure cool. You won you we hung out a wee bit of wasn't against the rules. At Gemma's house party we were drinking whiskey. In retrospect I think you were feeling a bit frisky cause you touched my arm and laughed at my jaw. But these feelings inside kinda gave me the ball. So when I reached in my rucksack, what did you do? Recited all my M and M tributes just for you. I was a dafty but a pure like you. Had all these weird feelings, did you know what to do? Can you be pals with lassie? So I got some glue and I poured you in your can of iron brew. You weren't me impressed, my head was a mess. I said, I think I'm going to leave. I said, I think that's the best. So I went home determined to get a new goal. Instead of writing poems, I'm going to get my hole. I was a dafty, but I pure liked you. Had all these weird feelings, didn't know what to do. Can you be weird pals with lassie? So I got some glue and poured it into your can of iron brew. And that's poetry sessions finished. Maureen, Maureen, I need some talk. Guess what guys, we've got another great act for you right now. It's Adam McNell's, here you go. Hey, so I'm at the pub. I go to the toilet for a fish. And I'm just doing a pee. And suddenly I hear, oh no, oh no, you can't lie how pissed you are to the missus when you get shite in your jumper. So I immediately goes in, tells the whole pub, there's a guy in there with shite on his jumper, the whole place is pissing himself. And then a week later, I go into the pub, and some fucker's telling my story. And I'm like, that's my story. And then I realise, it's the guy, it's the actual guy who shite his jumper, is telling the story. But is it his story? Because I saw it, and I recorded it, and I get the laughs. But it was his jumper, and it was his shite on the jumper. So it comes down to Am I stealing his story? It's my fucking story. Alright guys, um, I don't know if you are having fun or not. Uh, you guys be the judge.
In fact, no, we'll let our next guy be the judge because he is the judge. Don't get too judgmental because he's a mental judge. It's Andy. Dad. Andy Judge. Here you go. Thou shalt not lie to a significant other. Thou shalt not blame your father and mother. Thou shalt not covet things you don't need. Thou shalt not rub another man's rhubarb. Thou shalt not act nicely when you're not. Thou shalt not describe someone as hot. Thou shalt not touch without permission. Always ask permission. Thou shalt not use a simple word if a superlative exists. Thou shalt not avoid spoken words that put your tongues in twists. Thou shalt not demean the general public with your breathtaking command of the English lexicon, even if they fucking deserve it. They should not put the milk in first before you add hot water. They should not watch hardcore pornography knowing that is someone's daughter. They should not get your news from memes. They should not get your sexual kicks from screens. They should not get nostalgic for the 90s. They should not give up on your childhood dreams. They should not use higher purchase or buy to find your purpose because the things you own will end up owning you. Apple, just a brand. Converse, just a brand. Amazon, just a brand. Clusterfuck Circus is just a brand. Your religion, just a brand. Your atheism, just a brand. Your government, just a brand. The NHS is just a brand. They shall not be a hypocrite, like a pro trident trade unionist. They shall not seek the approval of others, nor attempt scrubious pit covers. They shall not whine about Scottish nationalists and then vote for Tory fascists and don't support the Liberals unless you are a masochist. They shall not lament political correctness or hate Doug Stanhope's directness. They shall not assume that you're not infectious. They shall not make jokes about coronavirus. They shall not ignore the science or peddle bullshit pseudoscience. They shall not secretly like Boris Johnson. He is a cunt. They shall not end the conversation by dropping a mic. They shall not belittle young people because they do things you don't like. They shall not provide forewarning or declare a trigger warning. They shall not demand a safe space or call millennial snowflakes. Thou shalt question anything that has people behaving like the citizens of a dystopian future because that shit ends badly. But most of all, thou shalt always thrill. Just a style, new rave, just a style, emo, just a style, oh forget it, I ain't getting into that again. Alright guys, alright Neil, hope you are still drinking, hope you are still watching at home, hope you are giving us a thumbs up, uh, stick that thumb right up your bum. Okay, um, who have we got next then, Zuri Todd Ooh, I'm going to say that one, I'm going to say that one. Um, oh, it's, it's one that you like isn't it, Is it you, you like this guy don't you? You like all these people, obviously, I mean, but you really like this guy, who he yeah, is? I probably can pronounce better than you. It's Nico and the logo. Hello, just of all, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Rockman. Yes, 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 I just sacrificed to be a tiny haircut. Yeah, a tiny haircut. Um, see my haircut here? Looks like an ass, right? That's my haircut. I got my haircut because I had to sacrifice this woman. It's a long time. Yeah, um, this haircut's really important, so I decided to sacrifice for online dating. So I started with match. A match line dating app, they told me you can't match. You're too tall. And I went to Grandma. Grandma, they say, look, you're good looking. I can't help you. So I decided that one. You know the other one, it's called the pick pick one. The one you send your pick pick and then they send it back to you. You know which one I'm talking about, right? You know it. Yeah. You know, you know, you know this one. Pick, pick, pick. So I'm not the only person here, so you know it, this one. Great, great, great. Yeah, the other one, yes. This one. Yeah. So yeah, I did it. I sent it. And then it came back. And they brought me. Because it's too big. This is too big, ladies and gentlemen. Too big. I'm oh, good. I'm blocked now, so yeah. So I told my friend that uh, I had a haircut. She said, Would you want me to show me your haircut? So I showed her this. You see this ass? This, this haircut here? And she's like, ah, you, look like you look like Elton John's brother. I'm like, Do I look like Elton John's brother? She said, ah, Yes, this is Elton John's brother, ladies and gentlemen. 
I have to move, I have to go, because I have two guinea pigs to feed in Hamilton. You guys can wonderful audience and enjoy your lockdown in Castle Park. Cheers. <laughs> Another belter. Oh yeah. Now we're ready. Right, now we're ready. Put your 3D glasses on because this shit's gonna jump out the screen at you. It's some crazy shit. We've got another act for you right now. Who is it, Zerito? Mikey. It's Mikey Perry, everybody! Mikey Perry! Here you go! What up, Costa? I see David Nichols poem with plagiarism. Nah, I'm in. Plagiarism can be a pain in the ass. Right enough when you find that some fucker's gone and stole your stuff. The guy that published one of mine, it created strain. He wasn't even a poet. Go and pal, write one yourself and use your own brain. See, we're all going to need to go to Weight Watchers when this is all over. Scotland did say, and probably also to AA. I suppose that it's true what she says, as we all know, no doubt. There are many millions, if not billions now around the world, of a species known as a piss couch potato. See you later. Mm, 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 mm. The fucking party never ends. The party never ends. The permo never ends. The lockdown never ends. We don't know when the fuck <laughs> this is going. We don't know when going. it's going to end. <laughs> the, the never ending lockdown. That's what's happening right now, guys. It's fucking boredom city, isn't it? It's fucking dire. Diabolical. Um, talking of bollocks. Um, Siri loves bollocks. She loves my bollocks for some reason. I don't know. Never mind the bollocks. We've got another great act coming on. All right, it's uh, the wonderful Gwen McCarroll. Here you go. Amanda Palmer is an American. Amanda Palmer, thank you for the lovely rhythmic symmetry of your name. Amanda wrote a song about the well-being effects of playing the ukulele. Although, she said you only had to learn three chords. Ukulele Anthem has six. But since she's a nice person, I will forgive her. Tenuous link alert. Donald Trump is also American. Don't mention his mother. Donald Trump is not Scottish. Imagine if Donald had played the ukulele. He wouldn't be such an imbecile. He might have found a better hairdresser and started talking sense. He might stop building walls to keep out Mexicans and being a Democrat. If everyone in Britain played the ukulele, maybe we wouldn't have voted for Brexit, which was designed to get rid of immigrants, whom we now need on farms to pick fruit and in hospital to save lives. Maybe if the guy who ate the uncooked bat in China had played the ukulele, he wouldn't have eaten it. And no one would have died of COVID-19. Art shouldn't be hard. It needs to be easy so that we can all do it. And we can all express ourselves so we don't end up bitter and twisted and become Nazis, Conservatives or Republicans. Be a hero. Be a nice person. Take up art. Do it well. Do it badly. It doesn't matter. Just do it and love it and express yourself in any way you choose. Don't become Hitler, Trump or Boris. We have enough worries right now. Just play your ukulele. Alright guys, you guys want to stay safe at home. So remember, never leave your fucking house with at least three masks strapped to your face at any one time. Wear gloves. Don't talk to anybody because they're probably riddled and you don't want to have any of that shit in your face. What the fuck is this all about? <laughs> She's trying to give me the virus. Virus party! Woohoo! I'm going to spray my viral load all over her in a wee minute. You guys, you guys can watch this. Hello, Cluster Falks. Right, my wee stories about a lassie who is a prostitute with an elite clientele. Filthy locks and the wild mushrooms. Act 1, scene 1. Filthy's cutting about the woods looking for mushrooms for her client. She's going to make him a pizza later. A special pizza with special mushrooms. 
Her wee basket is half full of magic mushrooms. Needless to say, she has one or two and starts singing full pelt. Scene two. She's singing at the top of her lungs. It's a shite day for a white wedding. Something's pulling out of her, but not to worry. It's just her long locks have been caught in a branch. She's fine with this big ogre, also known as a tree. Screaming, I'm no merry new Shrek. I need three. Act two, scene one. Filthy sees a wee house out her half shut eyes at the end of the woods. She heads up and she enters in. There's a table set with three bowls. She sits down in the biggest chair and starts to eat and spits it out. Ooh, that's lumpy and sour. She moves to the next chair. Ooh, it's all watery and salty. Normally she'd swallow, but she spits it out too. She moves to the wee teeny weeny chair and eats what's in the bowl. She ate the lot. The chair broke. She fell, hit the deck. Fat cock. Mm. Act two, scene two. Now Fulfie's a nosy cow. She starts to prowl the house. She's in and out the cupboards and drawers, heads up the stairs to check the rooms. She climbs into the big king size bed and feels something under head. Turns out it's a magazine. Bunny does animal farm and some crusty dog leaves. She gets up, she moves and jumps into another bed. So, so nice and soft. She has a look at the bedside cabinet, heads into the bottom drawer. It's full of naughty toys. But she turns around, she piffles and sharted the bed. Up she gets and gets into the other one. She decided to take another mushroom. But she can hear something down the stairs. But as she goes to have a look, there's three big bears, all snarling, looking at Fulfy. But Fulfy's not scared. She just goes down and lifts her skirt and shows them her bed. Bye! Get ready to get blown away by the next act. It is Rolly King! It's me, Magic Mike. What does the sorcery? Now I've taken over the body of this young man to sing you a tale of woe. Not only does he come with this tiny guitar, but it also should avoid me any sort of legal trouble down road. Let's have some, shall we? My name is Magic Mike. My tricks are dynamite. I'll entertain you tight. I'm cheap at twice the price I am not Channing Tatum I really fucking hate him That oiled up muscle man He's trying to steal my ass. But if you let me come inside your mind You are sure to have a real good time A real good time You know who I am, I am that magic man Let me tell you all about a twat who don't know nout I was living large on Blackpool Boulevard It was all going well until it went to hell But no fear, fear, you ain't seen nothing sweeter Those fucking bastards kicked me to the curb that arsewipe Alan Sedgwick He's a fucking prick Who said my last and sent me on my way I had three shows a night Rooms filled with delight And audiences kept on coming back I was a man for all stages Theatre for all ages And he still gave me the sack Not culturally relevant, man is what he said. Magic, if you can believe that. The look of wonder on a creamy child's face when I pull his chosen card out the middle of an ham sandwich is apparently no longer in fashion. 35 years as a national treasure the nation's top comedian They stripped me of my residency Left me rather glam my ex 
wife dies And now I'm stuck with her son He's no use And he sure ain't no fun So now I'm here Touring the land Hoping that you'll understand That if you let me come inside your mind When you are short to have a You let me go. Right, okay, guys, how he's doing now? He's having a wee drink, he's enjoying yourselves. I hope so. Because there's more. There's the, I know, it's mental. There's fucking more of this shit. There's more. And we've got another act coming up for you. Right, fucking now. As Jen Hughes. Hello, my name is Sylvia of Junior Dwarf Plat, owner and editor of both Charges Press and Dear Mistress Magazine. Submissions always open. Classbox Circus has asked me to perform a poem here, and you know me, I love to help out the amateurs when I can. Due to this awful virus, I have been confined to Daddy's second holiday home in West Ayrshire with my lover, Vita Tertiu Sackville. <sighs> it's difficult being passed from my beloved fellow intellectuals, but the pastoral landscape has been my muse of late, as it has been for the great poets Wordsworth, Coleridge, McGonagall. I have also taken solace in the music of my dear colleague Gwen Mackerel. Her first and only album, Art is Very Hard was deeply inspirational. The poem I shall be reading tonight for you lucky people has from my upcoming collection. This poem offers my unique insight into the meta-narrative intertextual feminist discourse which underlies the super ex existential nature of the current pandemic. I will be accompanied by my lover, Vitar, on the guitar. Amanda is an American from the United States of America. Amanda, Amanda Palmer, Amanda, thank you, Amanda, for your rhythmic symmetry. Amanda wrote a song about her ukulele. She said learn three, but she meant learn six. But since she's a nice person, I will forgive her. Donald Trump is also an American from the United States of America. Imagine if Donald had played the ukulele. He wouldn't have been such an imbecile. He might have found my hairdresser and started talking sense like me. He might have abandoned his great wall and became a Democrat. If everyone in Britain played the ukulele, perhaps there would not have been a Brexit designed to rid of those pesky immigrants who we need as they will pick up fruit and run our NHS. Maybe if the Chinese man who partaken in a non cooked bat had... Oh, and my phone's ringing. Oh, yeah. Vita, shut up! My phone's ringing! Hello? Oh, hello, Gwen! How are you, darling? Oh, you've been watching right now. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. No, I wrote this poem for my collection. It's nothing like your poem. Well, yes. My work interacts with the text and transforms it. You of all people must know that. Oh, you're calling me unoriginal? You lifted your whole whatever it is you do from that half a man's palmer. If there's anyone who's a plagiarist, this is quite clearly you. It's not my fault readers like my work better. 
You're just jealous because my poetry makes money and yours doesn't. It's not an allowance, it's a trust fund! Listen here, you prissy fucking deadbeat. You would be nothing without me. I can quite easily take back all that recording equipment I bought you. It's all on my credit card, remember? Daddy could buy and sell you, and on my word, he could he could ruin your career, so don't even try it. Have I made myself clear? Hello? Hello? Good. I'm glad we've come to an agreement then. Goodbye. Vito, has that been recording all this time? Switch it off then! Right, what have we got coming up next then? Zurito. Mmm, now they're gonna know. Is you think you know? Yeah, yeah. She's not sure, she's not sure. Is something about performers? Yeah. Something about Transformers. It could it could very well be. It could very well be because the next guy we've got coming up, Clusterfuck Regular, he's been there since day number one, the very first Clusterfuck two years ago. It is the one and only Andrew Vannon. Alright. I'm a transformer. Look at me, what are the odds? Anyway, my name's Boulder and welcome to Transformers Chaos. I'm sitting in a park manspreading. Manspreading are you? Hope you're bloody happy with yourself. It's a public park, not a personal space. Oh shut the fuck up you. I don't need any disrespect from you. I'm a helicopter and I could helicopter the shit out of you. And that's my stand-up submission video for Glasgow Stan. Oh, we'll get on sometime soon. Aye, uh, you'll get on sometime soon, aye. Aye, uh, we are cool, huh? Maybe, maybe next couple on. Aye, well, whatever. Humans are strange with diseases and stuff. Aye, uh, so what are you up to? Aye, uh, no, much. I'm just man-spreading after a big dirty joint. Oh, that's class. Yeah, smoking a joint and then man-spreading. But do you think you're a Kardashian or something? Uh no, I'm just hoping I could be one day. Is that a bloody uh, blur I can hear? Oh I think so, I <laughs> Here we here we here we fucking go! Here we here we here we fucking go! I took a sweatshirt back in 2003 and I've still not been able to stop buzzing. Here we go! <laughs> buzzing away like fuck. Ha! Ah, happy days. Hey boy, he's got a uh, drugs or something. Anyone got a bit of West Ching? Weed? No, none. Oh, well, uh, I did have some weed earlier on, but um, yeah, it's all smoked. Oh, what a bastard! Aye. <laughs> right, so how are you guys in? Aye, we're all right. Oh, for fuck. Sick. I suppose that's fabulous pain coming along. Yes, it is, little fellas. How are you all doing? I got my nails painted this morning. Ah, oh, happy days. I'm sitting down, but I'm just taking a bit more relax. What's up guys? How are you all doing? Alright. Yeah. Uh Yeah, I'm doing okay. We're going ahead because it's three minute limit. Hey hey. Hey hey. We're fucking in the house. Still. Still in the house, clearly. I'm um, gonna go back to my wine, I think. Oh you're onto the wine now, I'm on the wine too, the tonic wine. Chin to that. Yeah. Let's drink to that guys. I hope you've got a drink at home. Pour yourself another one because next up we've got who is it, Zerito? Jambo! It's we Jambo, everybody! Here you fucking go! Right, so I've got five minutes to do a set. And then, uh, I'm gonna fuck off, right? So I've got a stammer. And, uh, sometimes it takes five minutes for me to say my fucking name. I mean, it pure screwed me up. I had to like, visit a therapist. Um, they recommended CBT. I confused me because I didn't know it meant cognitive behavioural therapy. It's the, as a gay man, I thought it meant, you know, cock, cock and ball torture. And, um, 
I mean, they were like, oh, don't worry, loads of men use it. And I was like, really? Like, Aye, CBT can you help you get a grip on things. I was like, fuck's sake, they know why my voice is so high. Uh, I mean, the therapy worked, like, not the CBT, but I thought I'm going to try dating again. And I, I tried an app called Scruff for um, bears. So bears and uh, the gay scene are like big, heavy, hairy cunt, right? Well, no cunts, they're guys. And, um, kind of like if you put Ann Widdicombe in a gorilla suit, whacked her on a pair of stilts. And I was pure pleased um, because I didn't think I fitted into a category. But I got a message and it's like, oh, there you go, sexy otter. I was like, well, it explains my love to jump into a river and build a fucking dam. She's like, no, that's a beaver. There's not much connection between beavers and gay men, you know. So uh, I thought, I'll give this guy a bash and we arranged a date. I decided, right, I'm going to get fit. I mean, I wasn't always so healthy because I'd grown up as a rave kid in the 90s. I used to take a lot of drugs and I'd done something stupid. Uh, apart from getting the same haircut as the Comfy Stone Roses. No, um, I tried heroin. There's like only one thing more stupid than trying heroin. And it's uh, trying heroin and watching train spotting. I think, what the fuck did we think it was? Like an instruction manual? Like, Oh, I want to pee a bum, I was cold, man, right, you'll go to dive into the toilet, is that going to fucking work? I mean, mind you, maybe Sydney World would uh, do better with, uh, they gave it drugs for uh, that 4D effects thing, you know, maybe cats would have been a bit more tolerable. I mean, so, drugs are pure prevalent where I live, right? I live in Shelton, and uh, it's rough as fuck. Life expectancy is 63. I love being in an area where the life expectancy is 63. Think about it. I reach 62, right? Run up up your huge credit card bill. Take a few days off work. But fuck it, no even gonna turn up at all. No bother if I get fired in it, boy die. I mean living in Shettleston, great for a gay man. Pals like that. How do you handle living in Shettleston with all the murders and all the guys dying so young? I was like, ah, mate, if you see all the clothes in the charity shop man, I mean you didn't need to boil wash them, but pfft. Anyway, so I try to be a muscle Mary, and uh, a muscle Mary is a gay man that works out a lot. It's not, it's somebody suggested in a previous gig, a nun that works out that the fuck man's god pure, like, I, oh, I want my girls pure bulked man, like, nuns with guns, nuns with guns, what am I, what the, this is why you shouldn't do drugs, right? Anyway, I met a guy, do you know what? Beautiful, I've stammered after chatting, he's like, you you're pure funny, you're even funnier than that cunt Wee Jambo. Wait, how does Wee Jambo's name keep getting mentioned in my dates? Anyway, date was like, ah, you're pure funny, and eh, uh, I've been so depressed lately, and I'm like, oh, have you tried CBT? And somewhere there's a bear with a really high voice, and a new fetish. I need wine. I need wine. I need wine too. I need wine. Where is the wine? Here's the wine. Ooh, where's another wine? Yes, mm. we, we all need more wine. Pour yourself a drink at home. Next mm. up, we've got... Who is it? Zurigo. A wonderful woman. A wonderful senorita. It's Helen McCabe, everybody. Hey, all you cats, kittens and clusterfuckers. Well, you've just caught me basking in the sun. If you hear any screaming, it'll be one of my badly trained volunteers getting their arm ripped off. So between lockdown and Tiger King, we are officially living in a Stephen King novel set at Christmas time in Las Vegas, where people are losing money, even the fat cats. It's acceptable to drink at all hours of the day. And no one has a fucking clue what day it is. I mean, last weekend I was celebrating Easter and now it appears it's Halloween. There are a few givens when this all comes to an end. Lots of babies will have been created. Divorce lawyers will be rubbing their hands. However, don't worry. You can direct message me for my money saving tips there. The effects of isolation on people's mental health and well-being will be much more obvious. <laughs> if it isn't already. And the sales of Corona beer are plummeting. Because there are some numpties out there who still believe 
that is how the virus is transmitted. And all that's happened to me is that I have eaten myself out of a house and home. So I'm now so fat I look nine months pregnant. And I'm a member of the overweight group who are now dreading being back out in public. I am here today to introduce a poem written by Nico and Lovu, giving us his unique thoughts about the COVID-19 restrictions called The Numbers Are Going Up and The Queue Is Getting Longer. I have to warn you that it will be read by Dr. Death Dunn, a strange wheezy character that sounds like he actually needs one of those elusive and rare respirators. So enough from me. Stay home, stay safe and stay well, fuckers. Uh, hello, class motherfuckers. I'm here to read you a wee poem. I wrote it this week. It's called The Numbers Are Going Up and the queue is getting longer. The queue for returning toilet papers numbers are going up. The queue for returning pasta the numbers are going up. And the queue for returning dead bodies the numbers are going up sadly. The queue for returning painkillers, the numbers are going up. The queue for returning survivors, the numbers are going down. Sadly. The queue for returning drugs is going down. The queue for returning alcohol is going down. I'm not surprised at that. The baby boomers numbers are coming up. The baby boomers numbers are coming up. The overweight generation, the numbers are coming up. The depression numbers are coming up. For anxiety, numbers are coming up. For happiness, numbers are coming down. Drink Corona, beer, and stay safe. Focus. Mm, well, I've had enough of that. Let's change it. Let's change the script. Let's say uh, switch some styles up. Let's see what we can do here. Let's mix it up because this is the cost of fuck suckers. And we are all about a variety of weirdness. Guess who we've got up next? It's one of your favourites, I know that much. Um, it's one of my favourites too. Do you know who it is? It's a poet. It is, it's a poet. A good one. <laughs> a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it is the one, the only, Gordon. Gordon Perry. I just love when I hear that you're on the coke and all the jellies. Oh, going to the bed too early. You're a fucked up man, Dan, but your speech was grand, Dan. Some people are born to be huggers. Girl, the dick will flare, and will they will stop or stare. Until psychedelic heart more tucked on the flare. Oh, Dan. Oh Dan, oh Dan, you're a lucky fecky motherfucker, more like being than any other, you can't prove anything that you want with facts, oh Dan, I hope you like this cover of Susan. Oh, Dan. All right then, okay. The madness continues. The Palmo never ends. It's a never ending Palmo. It is the local lockdown. Next up, we've got 
David Nickel. Hello, clusterfuck. Okay, this is a poem by Mikey Bowery. It's called Twelve Steps. The Twelve Steps of EA. Step one, admit you're powerless over alcohol. Aren't we all? You're using one hand to balance pissing against a graft stain wall, or dropping your drawers for a guy with no job and obviously awful flaws. Step two, choose to restore sanity. No, my problem is I have so too much so I must dull every sense existing in the present tense. Much to my detriment, this potato pickled water seems heaven sent, which brings me to the next step. Step three, turn our life over to a higher power. I'm sorry, but if I am to be monetist, I have been choosing vodka over Jesus. Step four, make a searching inventory. I have no identity. I am a functioning alcoholic who spends a third of his day in public toilets drinking tonic to assuage the sweats and vomits, if I'm honest. Step five, admit our faults to God, ourselves and another human being. What? You sure you know the one steaming and I just want to be clean, no share my feelings, expose my weaknesses, fine I'll try it just to please you. I'm a rancid Jake who emptied my DNA on your sister's face, happy mate. Step six, be ready to have God remove all these character defects. Pfft. That makes sense, no pretense. I need to help approach step seven, God mend him by amendum. Once I approach the next step, I'll be sober, sweet, better person. Yet, step eight, I'll embrace Jesus Christ as the truth, life and way. I no longer want the women or bottles of a side of me. I want sobriety and his hand to guide me. Six and twelve God and self go his ways. I pray being true wealth, I'll swear I'll start today. I wish I could shake off the tremors with the one vodka and OJ. Alright guys, uh, we're back again and uh, we've got another great act coming up. It's a clusterfuck regular, a guy who's appeared multiple times at clusterfuck circuses in multiple different personas as multiple different characters. He's been Guy Fox. he's been Magic Mike, he is the one and only Warren Stucker. Salutations one and all. Magic Mark, ex of Blackpool's prestigious North Bay Theatre, presently of nowhere in particular here, along with my very good friend, effervescent pop starlet and perennial Brian Blessed impersonator, Mr. Eddie McKenzie, everyone. Hello, Eddie. Hello! And, um, we've been asked to come inside your drab little lives and brighten them up just a touch with a sprinkle of showbiz magic, ladies and gentlemen. Whimsical! And so, what we thought we'd do for everyone out there in Tintinet land here today is perform a small medley of young Edward's songs. An Edley, if you will. I oh, thank you. Isn't that right, Eddie? Precisely! Fuck's sake. It's too loud. Right, tone it down. So, um. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's start, shall we? Ready? Eddie? Go! When your whole life seems to be going down the drain And all you desire is the feeling of Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my wife did leave me for an ASOS driver. One named Tony, as it happens. A decision which ultimately led to her untimely, although undeniably richly deserved, death. And with her abandoning me and her adult child, Craig, the BDSM games naturally dried up. It's no fun flogging your own genitals after all, is it? 
and while I did purchase a tie bride, Carol, in an effort to fill the void left, she has been en route for delivery for quite some time, and there really is only so much you can do in the realm of bondage and sadomasochism when one party is operating on a dodgy 3G connection from the back of an articulated lorry. And so, with my wife and the associated kinky fuck games long gone, and my life spiralling badly out of control, I am ashamed to say, ladies and gentlemen, that I did turn to the drink. It's eight o'clock on a Wednesday night, Wednesday night. under the blinding black pool lights. One more drink will set me right. No, I'm not going home. Let's lock the doors, it's way past closing. King of Shirley Temple's flowing. Ladies and gentlemen, I became addicted to the sweet alcoholic embrace of the Shirley Temple. And though battling through this addiction undoubtedly represented the nadir of my life to date, I always kept a single thought in the back of my head that never failed to bring me hope. And truth be told, probably stopped me from stepping in front of a fucking train. When life isn't going so good, huh? when life isn't going great, yeah. just remember it's not so bad, at least you're not a pedophile at the school gates. Yes, your career's stagnating Your wife has run away with an ace Or sponsor you're overweight and you're greying But at least you're not a fucking nonce Hey, at least I do not work for the BBC They're all nonces over at the BBC Jimmy Savile, David Lee Travis and Rolf Harris Jeffrey Wheeler, Christopher Denning The entire cast of The One Show probably Excited, he's happy, he's loving the fucking buck fast, he's enjoying herself, Zerito is. She's fucking bouncing like a magic. She's out of fucking tree, and I hope you are too, because we're fucking loving this, and we've got more fun to come. In fact, yeah, 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 what are you doing? I'm looking for my booze. She's looking for booze. Because with the rat, I can't see. I can't see <laughs> fuck all year, but we need to find but the wine. Where's the wine, Zerito? You need to find the wine. I got it, I got it. I got the wine. Right, you guys, pour yourselves a drink at home because here is the wonderful knob steer. How many dreams must young man hate before just young will come true? Yes, and how many souls will the devil purchase? Before he demands something new Yes, and how many lives will man sacrifice Before he escapes from the zoo The answer, my friends, is all up to you The answer is all up to you Yes, and how many battles will humanity win Before it defeats itself Yes, and how many pills does it need to consume Before it attains mental health Yes, and how many throats do we need to cut Before we can share our wealth the answer, my friends, is all up to you. The answer is all up to you. Yes, and how many hearts will be lonely the night? Because we didn't can how to disagree. Yes, and how many songs do we need to sing? Before we can just let it be. 
Yes, and how many times can you turn your head? Pretend that you're too smart to see. The answer, my friends, is all up to you. The answer is all up to you. So I have tasked some of the clusterfuckers to perform in the spirit of plagiarism. They're going to perform one of my poems right now. Here they go. Enjoy. With so many cunts in the world, where to begin? Some cunts are fat, some cunts are thin. Some cunts are losers and some cunts win. Some cunts are just as useless as Jewish foreskin. Some cunts are a big cunts and um, uh, some cunts are uh, a very small. Uh, some cunts are a short cunts and uh, some cunts are tall. Some cunts have cunts and, and we call those cunts dolls. Some cunts are cuntless. Oh. Shut up! Don't make me go back in the shed! Some cunts are cuntless, and instead they have balls. Some cunts are lassies, and some cunts are lads. Some cunts are mums, and some cunts are dads. Some cunts are happy cunts, and some cunts are sad. Some cunts are good cunts, and some cunts are bad. Some cans are Ringo, some cans are Paul, some cans are Fast Count, some cans are Barley Crow, some cans are Progress, while some cans are Stone, some cans get raging, while some cans are Slow. <coughs> some cans are Stacy, and some cans are Jad. Some cans are Angelina, and divorce some cans Gold Brad. Some cans are Timeless, some cans are a fad, some cans call it Tartan. Some cunts say it's plaid. Some cunts are hairy cunts, and some cunts are bald. Some cunts are young cunts, and some cunts are old. Some cunts are boring cunts, and some cunts are enthralled. Some cunts are friendly cunts, despite what they're called. Some cunts are angry, some cunts are glad. Some cunts blame other cunts, those cunts make them mad. Some cunts are unhappy about their cunty lives they've had. And some cunts wait in a queue for the latest iPad. Some cunts are poor cunts and some cunts are rich. Some cunts are sound cunts and some cunts just bitch. Some cunts are keepers and some you can ditch. Some cunts are as irritating as a yeasty cunt itch. Some cunts are clean cunts. Some cunts are smelly. Some cunts are honest cunts. Some cunts Machiavelli. Some cunts get called gunts on account of their big belly. And some cunts are on Love Island when you switch on your telly. Some cunts are white cunts. Some cunts slim like a slit. Some cunts are lazy cunts. Well, some cunts keep fit. Some cunts are lying cunts. But some cunts can't admit. Some cunts are decent cunts. But some cunts talk shit. Some cunts are funny cunts, they're just having a ball. Some cunts are dumb cunts, like talking to a brick wall. With so many cunts in the world, this list will be a long haul. Basically, some cunts are just cunts. And really, that's all. Wow, there we go guys, there we fucking go. How did you enjoy that? That's the fucking show. That's all we've got for you. I hope you fucking enjoyed yourselves, because I know I did. Did you enjoy yourselves a little mm -hmm. <laughs> a fucking right good time. Uh, tune in again, because we're going to do more of these bad boys. Because the lockdown is going to go on for fuck knows how long, so let's just keep doing it, eh? Think for that, guys. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the rest of your night. Have a good one. See you as well. Bye-bye.